Good morning everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Scott Young and I'm the Product Development Manager here at LOA Computer Products. Today we are having a webinar on Grandstream's IP video surveillance products. Um, today we will are uh, also um, joined by Phil Bowers um, from Grandstream in the US. So it's quite late for, for Phil. So we uh, do appreciate you joining the webinar today, Phil. Okay, before we do uh, push on with the webinar, just a couple of, of items um, to go over just in re regards to questions that you have. So throughout the actual webinar, if you do have any questions, just fire them away um, through the question and answer panel on the GoToWebinar uh, panel that you've got there. And then at the end of the webinar, we will have an open mic Q&A session as well. Okay, so like I said, my name is Scott Young and we have Phil Bowers, the Global Marketing and Communications Manager at Grandstream in the US. Okay, without further ado, we will pass over to Phil um, and we'll get started on the, on the main content of the webinar. All yours, Phil. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, thanks, everyone, for being with us today. Um, good morning to all of you. My name is, as Scott mentioned, my name is Phil Bowers. I'm the Global Marketing Manager here at Grandstream. Uh, I'm sure hopefully many, some of you are with us for the initial Grandstream introduction webinar that we had. I'm the same guy. Um, so uh, we'll, you know, we'll basically over the next, uh, next, we'll say, 45 minutes or so, we'll be running through basically our IP video surveillance products and solutions, some of the things that allow them to stand out, um, some of the great things that you can do with them, and a lot of the integration and interoperability that our cameras offer. Um, so just as a you know, quick refresher on Grandstream, you kind of see it here. Um, you know, we started back in, we were founded in the early 2000s initially as uh, you know, one of the original SIP manufacturers. Uh, we started off with IP phones and analog telephone adapters and we've really morphed into becoming a full business communication solutions provider. Everything on the voice, video, data, and mobility side from IP phones to IP video phones to, um, you know, IP PBXs to uh, even now we have free soft phone applications and obviously we're here to talk about IP video surveillance today. Um, we have over 500 employees worldwide. Uh, we do primarily serve that small to medium sized business marketplace. I would say that our, uh, specifically our IP video surveillance cameras are great for the small business uh, marketplace, your retail stores, franchise stores, whatnot. We'll get into that. Um, and as Scott mentioned, we are uh, headquartered here in the United States, uh, here in Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I'm talking to you from today. So we can move on to the next slide. Um, this just kind of gives you, actually pretty much I already talked about this, a whole range of our current product portfolios. I did also forget to mention the decked IP phones. Um, you know, so we pretty much offer everything that any business is going to need to build a complete communication solution. Um, you know, obviously building it all with Grandstream products, you're going to have guaranteed interoperability, a lot of great features, a lot of interaction between the devices. Uh, especially on the surveillance side, which is a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today in terms of that integration. So we can move on to the next slide. One important thing um, to mention on the IP video surveillance side, for those of you that may not be familiar with it, is that all of our products, all of our surveillance products are OnVIF certified. OnVIF is basically an independent uh, company that or independent organization that was founded to create and set standards for the IP video surveillance marketplace. Standards in terms of the technology being used, how the technology is used, the features that are involved. Um, and so the, the great thing about OnVIF is being OnVIF compliant like we are, we are compliant with every other OnVIF compliant IP camera video management system network video recorder. Obviously, we have our own, but you'll see a lot of the solutions you see from companies here on the screen um, are going to do uh, a lot of different things. There may be systems that your customers are already using or that you're already familiar with. 
Uh, Nuo, Synology, QNAP being the big ones that you see here on the screen, Video Insight as well. Um, so by being OnViv compliant, our cameras, our video management software, and our network video recorder, which I'll show you as we go, um, are all going to be compliant with any other OnViv compliant video management software, network video recorder, or camera. So we can move on. All right, so um, we'll get more into the specific camera models later. These are pretty much the uh, the ones that we're going to be focusing on, and that's my fault, Scott. I guess I forgot to remove the animation from that slide, so my bad. Um, but these are pretty much the, the five models that we're focusing on today. Um, our outdoor cameras, the four outdoor cameras you see on the left, and our new indoor camera, the GXV3611 IR HD. Um, and we can move on from this slide. We'll be getting into more detail on these cameras later on. So pretty much the, um, we'll say the, the agenda as we go is, you know, I like to break it up so there's a little bit of method. And so you see kind of the method to the madness. Um, you know, basically what we've come up with, it's, it's a very simple four-step process for installing a video surveillance uh, network. We'll kind of go through that now in, in a way to just kind of facilitate the order in which we're talking about everything. Um, you know, the first thing we'll start off with is, is choosing the right cameras. And, and, you know, so I'll tell you why, why you should choose Grandstream cameras, some of the great cam features our cameras offer, the different types of cameras we offer, how to identify what the right camera that you're looking for is. Uh, then we'll touch a little bit on installation, mostly on uh, some of the features of Grandstream cameras that make installation so easy, and some of the main features that you'll want to set up when you do install these cameras, for example, motion detection. And then we'll wrap up by kind of talking about integration of our cameras with our network video recorder um, and with our IP PBX to allow the solution to kind of take on a life of its own. So we can get started by moving on to the next slide. So the first thing that I'll mention, and, and I think those of you that were with us for the first webinar a couple of weeks ago where we overviewed everything, um, probably saw this slide. The, the best thing about our IP video surveillance products is that they are SIP products. They run the exact same or nearly the same SIP stack as our IP phones and our other, um, you know, our IP PBXs basically as our telephony devices. So what that allows you to do is to install, configure, and integrate these IP cameras basically as if they were an IP phone. You know, we found that traditionally a lot of our, our resellers and the installers we work with play more on the telephony side. And so the great thing about these cameras being SIP cameras is that they allow you, if you're a traditional telephony guy, or, or woman to, um, you know, really add, sell more to your customers, to add more to what you're offering your customers by integrating these cameras and installing them basically using ways you are, uh, methods you're already used to. The other advantage to the cameras being SIP is that you can use the existing network infrastructure um, that most businesses are already going to have through their telephony network, through their VoIP network, or through their internet network. Um, you know, this is more general to IP surveillance, but Unlike CCTV, which requires those wires to be run basically all over the place, direct from camera to NVR, from camera to, you know, wherever, from camera to camera, um, you can use the existing network infrastructure and route all of your um, surveillance tech, all of your surveillance traffic and feeds through your existing network uh, internet infrastructure. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, two great wet, uh, things about our cameras, um, or I guess it's our cameras and our NVR, that make them very easy to install are two different auto discovery features that we offer. Both of these things are going to allow your, whether you're using a PC um, to set up your cameras through, user, uh, through the web user interfaces of the camera, um, whether you're using a PC to set up a video management software that you may have, or whether you're using our GVR 3550, we offer these two great auto discovery options. The one on the left is a free tool that we offer that you can download from our website. Excuse me. It's called GS Search. Again, this is a free tool that you can download from our website, and basically all it does is go out and it auto discovers cameras on your network, comes back, tells you the model number, the version number, the device name, IP, the port number, MAC address, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can go out and find those cameras easily, and then you'd obviously take those 
uh, IP addresses to go into the web user interface and configure them from there. Uh, if you're using our GVR3550, basically the same thing. It's a field within it that is able to auto-discover any Grandstream camera that is plugged into the same network as the GVR. You would simply click the little box next to each camera, click Add, and right away they would be added to your GVR3550 for monitoring and for recording. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, there's, you know, four, another great thing about our cameras is, and, and this kind of goes a lot to integrating the cameras with an IP PBX. Um, by doing that, our cameras are able to send alerts and uh, to a variety of devices, basically to proactively protect your business or your home or your customer's business to make sure that as soon as any security alarm occurs that multiple people can find out about it in multiple ways. Um, number one, uh, and we'll go into more detail on this later on, number one is, you know, simply put the, um, if you're using uh, G-Surf Pro, our video, or our um, GVR3550, or even any other third-party VMS or NVR to manage these cameras, um, that live view, uh, it's called Alarm Center, will simply just tell whatever you're using to monitor and record the cameras, whatever software or NVR, uh, that something's happened. Uh, number two, these cameras can be set to make video calls to video-enabled devices, like our, like our Android IP video phones. For example, you may have a camera set for motion detection at the back door, to your, uh, back door to your office. You can have that camera as soon as it senses that motion to automatically trigger a SIP video call to SIP video devices. Um, similarly to that, it can also trigger voice calls to voice or to SIP voice phones. Um, you know, with a pre-recorded message um, in case maybe there's no video phones or you want somebody that may have access to only a voice phone to be able to find out when a security alert occurs. Um, number four, the email screenshot. This is, you know, pretty much the most widely used one. Um, you can have the camera set so anytime a security alarm occurs, for example, if motion is detected by the camera, it can automatically take a screenshot of what it sees and send that screenshot to, I believe, up to three different email addresses. Um, so, you know, a lot of four great ways that these cameras can proactively alert you and keep you up to date with what's going on with your surveillance network. We can move on to the next slide. Um, this kind of feeds off of what you saw on the previous slide in terms of uh, the cameras being able to automatically trigger video calls. Um, and so in addition to the cameras being able to, able to automatically trigger vi uh, video calls, for example, when a security guy shows up to your office, the camera can automatically sense that motion and make a call to a video phone. Uh, vice versa, you can also pick up a video phone or a SIP phone at any point in time and call these cameras to see their live feed or to hear their live feed if the camera has a speaker or microphone hook up, hooked up to it. Um, yeah, you see on the bottom there, we're talking about, uh, this This is probably less generally about our surveillance products and more about our IP video phones, um, but it is obviously security related. Um, we, there's a number of projects and a number of deployments throughout the world that we're involved in, actually one down in Melbourne, uh, Australia, in which we have our video phones paired up with um, door access cameras at the front door to, you know, an office complex or to a, um, you know, an apartment complex um, where the cameras, you know, the camera, the door camera can be installed at the front door, our video phones in each of the office, um, you know, you can automatically from that door phone make a call up to the video phone um, through some DTMF codes which you can set, which I will show you in a little bit. You can actually have these video phones directly tell the door openers to open the door. Um, but again, that's more about our video phones uh, than the video cameras. So we can move on to the next slide. And here's a pretty much an example, just a quick visual example of, um, we'll talk a little bit more later on about integrating the IP cameras with your IP PBX to give them that SIP extension to allow the cameras to automatically make outbound video or voice calls and also to allow you to pick up the phone and simply call these cameras 
from a video phone or from a voice phone just by dialing the camera's extension to see the live feed or to hear the live feed. Um, you know, or to hear, um, yeah, to hear what's going on around the camera if you have a speaker or microphone configured with that camera. We can move on to the next slide. All right, so I, I kind of mentioned this earlier. This is a, uh, you know, a great feature that we offer to, through all of our cameras. The ability to allow the cameras to actually open doors that they might be uh, near, whether it be by connecting, usually the, the most common use of this is going to be by connecting a camera to a SIP door opener um, that might be connected to a door, um, where this is you know, kind of another great facility access or door access solution. Put that camera um, near the entrance to an office or to the, your front door at your house or whatnot. Have it set for motion. Um, you can have, you know, for example, as soon as the camera senses motion, can make a call to um, a video phone, and that video phone through these DTMF codes could actually tell the camera to tell the SIP door opener to open the door. And there you have a full facility access solution um, simply with an IP camera and an IP video phone right there. And we can move on to the next slide. This is kind of a, you know, basically a visual example of what I showed you on the last slide, um, you know, how you would set that up in terms of having the do uh, cameras be able to tell, uh, be able to open doors for you, you know, simply put, you would config, put that, install that um, IP camera and video phone, you would enable alert event on the camera to turn on that motion detection, you'd also, uh, like I showed you on the last slide, would go through and set up that SIP door open screen within the user interface. Um, and then that, simply put, would allow you to um, you know, have a video call automatically triggered and have those video phones be able to tell the camera to open the door and have the camera actually be able to open the door. So we can move on to the next slide. Uh, this slide pretty much tells you that um, you know all of our cameras, and you know we have there's a variety of older cameras that we have out there that are still fully supported. Um, all of our cameras are either going to have a built-in speaker microphone, or they're going to have um, we, you see them there. You, we'll call them pigtail cables. Uh, pigtail cables that are going to be able to give you uh, audio input, audio output, alarm input, and alarm output. This is great in case you're looking to connect the cameras to uh, an existing intercom system or a speaker uh, and microphone that you may have near the camera to kind of use it as part of an intercom system. Also great for in case you have any existing alarm devices, um, things such as door sensors, such as you know third-party motion sensors, sirens, what have you. You can connect those directly to the camera um, through these pigtail cables. Um, and then you'd obviously go in through the camera's user interface and you tell the camera what to do, um, you know, on the alarm side when it senses the alarm from these third-party devices. But, you know, you really, our cameras through these uh, external cables that they have are, are very easily integrated with any third-party um, audio device, whether it be for input or output, as well as alarm devices. We can move on to the next slide. GSurf Pro, uh, this is you know another great thing about Grandstream uh, products is that we or our surveillance products is that we offer this free video management software. What we call GSurf Pro can control up to 72 cameras simultaneously. Again, this is free software. Uh, it is made specifically to work with Grandstream cameras. Um, one of the best things about it is actually that second bullet point that you see there, that client server architecture, which simply gives you the ability to uh, low, run GSurf Pro centrally on a you know a server or a PC on your network and connect to GSurf Pro to view um, live feeds from any other PC or device on that network without having to load it directly. Basically, you running it as a client on every other device as long as it is installed centrally on a server or PC on your network. And again, this is a free video management software for our products. You can down or for our cameras, you can download it right off of our website. Um, and it is made specifically for Grandstream cameras. We can move on. 
There's a question about how many cameras the GVR3550 can support. Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. Uh, the GVR3550 can do up to 24 IP cameras. Um, well, we're going to get into the GVR3550, our new network video recorder, a little bit later on and kind of, you know, what it's, what it's ideally made for because of its support for 24 cameras. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, you know, this is to show you these, uh, this slide that, you know, every feature within our camera, uh, within any of our cameras are very easily set up through the web user interface for the camera just like any of our IP phones or any even third-party IP phones that you may be used to. Um, you know, there's no complicated software. There's no, um, yeah, there, there's no complicated software. All of the setup is done through this very simple, very streamlined, very easy to use web user interface. Um, you know, I would encourage you to take a look out for some of the uh, training classes we'll be offering over the next couple of months, either in person or some training webinars that we'll actually offer and that we might do um, through Alloy as well, um, which will show you more in depth the user interface. We'll basically give you a tour of the user interface, show you how to set everything up, show you how easy everything truly is. And we can move on to the next slide. Uh, same thing here, just you know, more features in terms of uh, just some screenshots to show you how truly easy everything is to set up through that web user interface. With motion detection, you'd literally just drag a box around whatever you're looking to detect. Um, the recording schedule, you see it's a grid, and you simply would click when and where you want to record, and that's obviously if you don't want 24-7, um, which is what most people would do. Uh, so we can move on to the next slide. Uh, again, just is what you would see if you tapped into any of the camera's live web user interface, you'd be able to see the live feed of the camera just by tapping or by you know entering the IP address of the camera into your browser. Um, obviously, all of this can be password protected. Uh, from here, you would need a password and a username to be able to get into uh, to configure the camera anyway. But in case you're looking to you know just take a quick look at what's going on with your camera, you can do that with any browser. We even give you the ability to capture screenshots from any browser to stop and start recording from any browser. Um, as well as to actually speak through the camera in case it might have a speaker or microphone or through the um, external speaker microphone it, ha it has connected to it. We can move on to the next slide. So we kind of just, you know, I went over a lot of different things about uh, some of the unique features about our cameras, some of the great things about our cameras. Now we're going to kind of run through the cameras themselves. I'm going to tell you, you know, the three different kind of cameras that we offer or the different kind of cameras that we offer, the questions to ask that are going to allow you to figure out what camera you need, and then we'll run through uh, our current five, uh, the current five cameras that we're really focusing on. So we can move on to the next slide. So pretty much ours break down into three different options. You're going to have your indoor cameras versus your outdoor cameras. Um, and, you know, I, I always... I always suggest that people pretty much, um, you know, the outdoor cameras, just because they're outdoor cameras doesn't mean they're only outdoor cameras. What makes something an outdoor camera is that it's made with a uh, weatherproof casing. Um, and as you'll see as we go through, some of our outdoor cameras have a lot of great features that also allow them to be great cameras for indoor use. Uh, the second thing you see there, infrared cameras versus non-infrared cameras. And this is basically the ability to see at night or in low light versus not having the ability to see at light uh, or at night or in low light. And, you know, basically what I find anymore is pretty much everyone always wants to monitor 24-7 nowadays. And for that, I would always suggest that for any deployment, you look at infrared cameras. Um, and then the third kind of third thing there is the various shapes of whether, you know, you're looking for a dome camera or a box camera, a cube or a bullet camera. This has a lot to do with where you're going to be deploying the camera. Um, obviously, if you're looking to deploy it on a ceiling, dome cameras are the most popular ones. You can also look for bullet cameras, which can be put, um, you know, put on a wall, or, uh, a wall or on a ceiling. Um, well, you'll, we'll go through this a little bit more as we go through each model, and I'll give you an idea of what they're each best for. So we can move on to uh, the next slide. Yeah, we can actually move on to the next slide from here as well. 
um, where I'll basically kind of show you how to figure out what cameras you're looking for. Um, so three really easy basic questions, and it looks like I forgot to remove the motion from this, and that's my fault. I'm sorry about that. Um, three basic questions that you can ask that are always going to tell you what you're looking, what camera you're going to need. And this might be more basic for some of you, so just bear with me for a moment. Um, you know, number one, what are you monitoring? And this comes down really to the distance, the distance that you're looking to monitor. Are you looking to monitor something close to where you're going to put the camera? in which you're going to want something more at a wide angle. Um, wide angle close proximity is what I would call it. Or are you looking to monitor something more in the distance? Um, for example, a parking lot, a larger indoor area, a warehouse, something down the street. This number one is going to tell you what millimeter specification you want. And generally speaking, um, if you're looking to monitor something at a close proximity to the camera at a very wide angle, for example, pretty much any indoor area, lobby, uh, what have you, you're going to be looking for something with a lower millimeter specification, anything from two to, say, six millimeters. If you're looking to monitor anything more in the distance, you're looking at something more uh, on, on a higher millimeter specification, um, eight to 12, for example. The second question, we kind of covered this already, is the camera going to be indoors or outdoors? If it's going to be outdoors, you need an IP66 certified weatherproof camera. IP66 is just a certification offered to um, I weatherproof IP cameras, pretty standard out there on the market. Uh, number three, what are the lighting conditions? Uh, do you need to monitor 24-7 in any lighting condition, whether it's whether it's dark out or the, lo the low light, um, which is, I find, 99% of um, surveillance applications now need to be able to monitor 24-7 and for this uh, you're, gonna, you're always going to want an infrared camera. We can move on to the next slide. There's a question through the chat about our uh, NVR's ability to support other manufacturers cameras. Um, our GVR3550 will be able to support any OnViv compliant um, cameras, which is why I mentioned OnViv compliant before. Um, in terms of what brands may or may not be OnViv compliant, that I can't speak to, and you'll have to kind of check in specifically with those brands. Um, so here, moving on, this is just kind of a visual um, example of what I was talking about in, tel in terms of the millimeter specification. I always say that millimeter spec it tells you basically the whole story of the camera, um, of you know what it's what it's meant to monitor basically. Um, you know I kind of threw out the general rule of our, our cameras go from 2.8 up to 12 millimeters, and you can kind of see over on the right hand side uh, what you get with that. 2.8 millimeters more for wide angle close to the camera, up to 8 millimeters which is for moderate distance, up to 12 millimeters which is more for distant monitoring parking lots, larger indoor areas, what have you. Um, kind of the way to think about it, just, you know, something I always like to explain is it, it, you know, these lenses work very similarly to the human eye. If you're looking at something close to you, you're going, your eye, your iris is going to be more wide open. You're going to be able to see on a wider angle. You have more peripheral vision, but you're focusing, you're not focusing on anything in the distance. You're looking at something close to you within five to ten feet. Um, whereas if you're looking at something more in the distance, your eyes going to be, you're going to squint and your eyes, you know, your field of view is not going to be as wide. You're not focused on the peripheral vision. You're focused on a specific point more in the distance. Camera lenses work exactly the same way. Whereas if they're viewing something close proximity wide to the camera, it's not going to be able to focus on something more in the distance, but its field of view is going to be wider. Whereas if you're looking at something more in the distance, the camera's going, the field of view is going to be thinner and it's going to be focused more on that one specific point. So you can move on. Uh, one question uh, that I just saw that came in that's, that's always good to mention, um, which actually we'll talk about on a coming slide, is the variable focal um, aspect of some of our cameras. We do have two different cameras that feature variable focal lenses. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about this a little bit later on. Um, and what, the var what a variable focal lens can do is it allows it to be adjusted from, you know, basically to allow it, you to set the camera, that millimeter spec, to change that around to best suit whatever you're trying to look at. have more on this in a couple of more slides. Um, 
here's another visual example of pretty much what I just showed you on the last slide, just to you know really hammer that home in terms of uh, the millimeter specification and how that correlates to what the camera is able to view. So we can move on to the next slide. And here is where we'll talk about the variable focal cameras. Uh, looks like I forgot to <laughs> remove the motion from this slide. I apologize for that again. Um, so this kind of just shows you where our cameras fit in in the spectrum. Um, basically, we go from 3.6. We have 3.6 millimeter models. We have uh, some 8 millimeter models. We have, I'm just looking through the specifications of them right now. Uh, we have some 2.8 millimeter models. And then we have our GXV3674 on the bottom there, uh, and our GXV3662, which is not shown here, which are both variable focal cameras. What this allows you to do is to adjust the lens of the camera from anywhere from 2.8 millimeters, which is good for wide angle cross proximity, up to 12 millimeters, which is better for you know more distant applications. This allows these two cameras to simply you know be able to be used in almost any setting. Um, makes them very you know customizable, easy to move them around, um, easy to a good option to buy if you're looking to deploy cameras, but you're not quite sure what uh, you'll be looking to monitor. So we can move on to the next slide. All right, so we, we can move on to the next slide again. I will now run through um, our five major camera, current camera offerings, um, which you see here on the slide. We'll pretty much differentiate them into those outdoor cameras and to the indoor cameras. And we can move on. Oh, it looks like I have a slide first for our network video recorder. This is our GVR3550, which I talked about earlier. Um, this is a uh, brand new NVR uh, network video recorder that we came out with back in November of last year. Um, you know, basically the way that we talk about it, it is extremely quick and easy to install. Uh, I mentioned the auto discovery before. It auto discovers any SIP cameras, any ONVIF compliant SIP cameras that are on the same network as the NVR to allow you to very quickly and very easily add them and set them up um, for recording and monitoring. Um, the, the second kind of point to take home is that we offer more storage capacity than any other NVR in its class. And when I say in its class, I mean the small to medium sized business class of NVRs. I'm talking about NVRs that are meant to monitor anywhere from 16 up to 32 cameras. Our GVR 3550 is meant for up to 24 cameras. And it can support up to 16 terabytes of data, of, excuse me, 16 terabytes of storage through up to four hard drives. One important point to mention is that we do not include these hard drives with the box or with the MVR. You have to purchase them separately. And the reason why we do that is to allow this GVR3550 to be basically scalable for any, for pretty much any um, use. You know, whether you're looking to, um, you know, it's a very cost effective uh, very cost-effective NVR, and now what we're allowing you to do is to basically, you know, only invest in much in terms of data as you need. If you're going to use this at your house and only monitor two to three cameras, you only really need one one hard drive. So you only have to purchase one hard drive that keeps the cost down. If you're looking to monitor something more, you know, up to 24 cameras, a whole business, you're going to probably want the four hard drives. Um, it simply put allows you as a reseller, as an installer, to use this box and to scale it to um, and to price it to pretty much any deployment um, within that you know up to 24 camera deployment. And all of this just makes it great for retail, warehouses, restaurants, residential, small to medium sized businesses, etc. We can move on to the next slide. So here is our GXV3611 IRHD. This is the main indoor camera that we are focusing on today and that we are selling today. We can move on uh, to the next slide, which has some more details on the 3611 IRHD. Uh, so this is a newer camera. We came out with it um, at the end of 2014. So it's been out on the market for about five months now. Um, it is an indoor camera uh, with, infrared, with infrared lights. Um, you pretty much see as we go through that pretty much all of our cameras are going to feature um, infrared functionality. All of our cameras also feature power over Ethernet, which you see here, which you see the icon here on the slide. 
Uh, so this is a 2.8 millimeter lens camera, great for wide angle, close proximity, pretty much any indoor area, an entrance, a lobby, what have you. Um, one of the best, two great things about this camera, number one is you see the SD card icon in the bottom right. This, this camera has a built-in SD card slot, which allows you to pop an SD card into this camera and allow it to basically function as a fully localized recording solution. You wouldn't even need to give it a network, uh, network connection. Just have the camera save all of its recording back to the SD card, pop out that SD card every now and then, back it up to a PC, put it back, put, the, put an empty one back in, and you have a full recording solution right there just from one camera, um, not just you know for a full recording um, of, of the camera in case you may not be close to a network connection or whatnot, or if you're only looking to put in one or two cameras. Another great thing about this camera, it has a built-in speaker and microphone. You see the, the microphone is right above uh, the lens of the camera, below the grand stream uh, text on the camera, and the speakers are going to be, you see them to the left and to the right of the camera. This is basically an intercom. This camera really allows you to create that intercom solution. Um, you know, give it a SIP extension, pick up a voice phone or a video phone at any point in time, call it, and actually speak through the camera to somebody that might be near the camera. We can move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so here we see our outdoor cameras. And again, Scott, I, I apologize for the motion on this. I should have pulled that out before I sent it over to you. Uh, that is my fault. But these are the three, in, or three outdoor cameras that we're focusing on. We can move on to the next couple of slides, and I'll show you more about each camera model. So here's our 3672 series, and it looks like this picture might fly in and fly out, and that's my apologies again. Um, so the GXB 3672 series, uh, most important thing to remember here is this comes with two different lens options, either a 3.6 millimeter lens, which is great for that wide angle, close proximity to the camera, and an 8 millimeter lens, which is obviously better for more distant applications. Uh, this camera has, you know, infrared light. It is built with the IP66 certified weatherproof casing, um, just like all the other cameras, all the other outdoor cameras, which you'll, which we'll show you now. They also have those pigtail cables to allow you to connect uh, third-party audio or to, you know, deal with audio input, audio output, as well as alarm input and alarm output. In case you may have existing intercom speakers, microphones, what have you. Uh, mention the infrared functionality, and it's um, you know both of the lens options are available as a full seven or 720p or full 1080p high definition recording. And we can move on to the next slide. Here's our GXV 3674, and the biggest takeaway here is it is a variable focal lens. And while the camera picture's still up, you can see the kind of see the knob right below the lens. You see it better from this angle, actually. See those two knobs right there? That's all you would have to do. That's all you'd have to touch to adjust this camera, um, to adjust the lens of the camera from anywhere from 2.8 up to 12 millimeters, which allows this camera to be used basically anywhere and to monitor anything. Just like our other outdoor cameras, it's built with that IP66 certified weatherproof casing. You see the infrared lights right there on the uh, face of the camera. Um, and it's also available as a 720p model or a full high definition 1080p model. And we can move on to the next slide. There's a question through the um, through the chat about warranties. And you know the warranty, I'll be honest with you, the warranties do differ a little bit depending on uh, who you're buying from. So that might be a better question um, for Alloy later. I believe that we offer anywhere between um, one and two year manufacturer's warranty on our, all of our cameras and then obviously distribute, uh, you know, Alloy may offer uh, extended warranty above that. Um, but I, again, I, I be honest with you, I don't know off the top of my head, it's either a one or two year um, manufacturer's warranty that we offer with all of our cameras. Um, so here's our GXV 3610 HD and FHD. Um, and again, just like our other cameras, this is available as a 720p or a 1080p model. Uh, this camera has a 3.6 millimeter lens. It is a very compact, very nice looking camera. Um, and because of this, I find that this is a great camera for indoor use as well. Uh, it's a very compact, very nice looking camera. Um, great dome camera to put on, you know, pretty much any ceiling. 
Um, it also has a built-in um, microphone, um, which would allow you to simply, you know, connect a speaker through the audio output um, from this camera. Uh, it has that microphone built right into it, so another great option to use, um, you know, to possibly run an intercom solution through that camera. Just like our other outdoor cameras, it's got that weatherproof certification, IP66 certification. You see the infrared lights right there on the screen. And just like all of our other cameras, it is power, it uh, supports power over Ethernet. And we can move on to what I believe is the last camera we're going to talk about today, which is our award-winning GXV3662. This is, um, this, out of all our current models, this is the one that's been on the market the longest. This is actually one of our original IP cameras, uh, one of our strongest, one of our most award-winning. This is um, priced a little bit higher than the other cameras, and the reason for that is it is a vandal-proof, tamper-proof camera, in addition to being weatherproof as well. Um, you know, if you ever got your hands on one of these cameras, they are basically, you know, in terms of being vandal-proof, you could essentially beat this thing with a baseball bat, run it over with a car, um, and nothing has happened. And believe me, we have tried before. Um, so, you know, it is, a, again, tamper-proof, vandal-proof, and weather-proof. Um, and there's an infrared um, icon on the screen. Um, it doesn't have built-in infrared lights, but <clears throat> it has what we call, or what, what manufacturers call IR cut. And that's basically uh, something built into the lens that basically functions nearly the same as an infrared lens to allow this camera to be able to monitor in low-light or no-light situations. Again, full power over Ethernet, weatherproof. Uh, this is our other uh, variable focal camera, which can be, um, so you can adjust this lens of this camera from 3.3 millimeters up to 12 millimeters, basically the whole spectrum to allow it to be put anywhere. Um, <clears throat> and with this camera, uh, a little bit more difficult to adjust that. You'd have to actually take the top off and go into the lens to be able to adjust that. Um, this being one of our more, you know, one of our longest running cameras and because of that vandal proof and tamper proof, um, this is the one model that we sell a variety of casings for. Every other camera is going to come with the casing and everything you need to install it in the box. This one does as well, but we also, you see the picture on the uh, lower left there, offer a couple of flush mounts, wall mounts, ceiling mounts uh, for this GXP3662 that can be purchased in addition. And we can move on to the next slide. And so, yeah, okay, here's our GXV3500. This is um, something that clearly even I overlook sometimes. Uh, this is an award-winning product. It's about the size of an analog telephone adapter. It literally is about the size of your palm. And it features a video encoder, decoder, and a public address system all in one. So it's a three, basically it says two in one. It's really a three in one combo device. Um, gives you the ability to add analog cameras to an IP network, to add IP cameras to an analog network, and also to set up a public address system. Uh, you see it's got TV out, so it can even be, um, you know, a video public address system. Um, but, you know, simply gives you the ability to set up, you know, basically what I just talked about, to add the um, analog camera to an IP network, to add an IP camera to an analog network, or to set up a public address system through existing speakers, microphones that you may have. And we can move on. And here's pretty much an example of what I just talked about. Uh, talk, I'll focus here on the public address system on the bottom. Uh, what, what this allows you to do, and what I mean by public address system, is it basically makes it a SIP-based public address system so that you could you know, make announcements simply by picking up, um, you know, any voice phone and calling the extension that you may set for that public address system. Um, you can also stream IP video content through it if you may have monitors set up around your office or around a customer's office um, with that public address system. And we can move on to the next slide. I mentioned G-Surf Pro before, um, you know, pretty much don't need to talk too much about it. Again, this is our free video management software that can record up to, se uh, monitor and record up to 72 grand stream cameras simultaneously. 
So now that we've kind of done that, I'll, I'll basically wrap up over the next, hopefully, 10 to 15 minutes here by telling you about some of the features of our cameras that make them so easy to install, some of the features you're going to want to look for when you're setting up the cameras, and then we'll finish up by talking about our network video recorder and um, uh, integration of why we so actively promote integrating cameras with an IP PBX. So we can move on to the next slide. So, you know, a couple of things that are, make our products so, so easy to install. All of them feature power over Ethernet, so you can give it a network connection and power with the same, um, same cable. All of our cameras, except for the 3662, the vandal-proof, tamper-proof camera, all of them include everything you need to mount the camera right in the box. Um, you know, the hex keys, the screws, the wall anchors, Ethernet cables, whatnot, everything except for the 3662 is all included in the box. You don't have to buy any separate mounting kits. Um, you know, I mentioned the SIP cameras before simply to allow you to use that same network infrastructure, um, the same network infrastructure and to set up these cameras through a web user interface, as you see here. Um, very easy to use web user interface, and as I mentioned before, uh, I would I would encourage you to um, you know check out some of our in-person trainings or our uh, video surveillance online training webinars to see more about the web user interface. And we can move on. <clears throat> Again, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, just you know more features to kind of you know hammer the point home about what makes our cameras so easy to install. These two great auto discovery features we offer whether it be uh, GS Search on any PC or the auto discovery tool that is built into our GVR3550. And we can move on to the next slide. Uh, real fast, I'd like, I'd like to touch on motion detection. This is pretty much the most, the, you know, the most widely used, um, we'll call it video analytic um, for grand stream cameras. All of our cameras give you the ability to set up to 16 target areas. You can also block out certain areas um, from the field of view. Simply to do that, uh, you know, to set up a target area for motion detection, literally all you would do is drag a box around. Uh, you would see the live feed of the camera through the user interface. You drive the box around what you want to, um, what you want to look for, or the area you want to look for motion detection, um, and then you would go from there. Uh, all of this fully set up through the web user interface, literally just by dragging boxes around what you would see on the live feed. And we can move on to the next slide. Um, you know, just real fast to, to set this up, just to, this is to show you how easy it is to set up. You would enable that motion detection. You see it over on the left. Just drag the box around. Um, <clears throat> and then you can get into, you know, different things. Basically, you would tell the camera what you want the camera to do when it senses motion detection, and that's through the alarm action setting. Uh, I'll cover this more on a slide that we have coming up. Um, and then the third thing you would do is just set up that motion detection time schedule, and that's pretty much that's pretty easy for most people. That's 24/7 recording um, all day, every day, which you would enter the information like you see it here um, for 24-hour recording. And we can move on to the next slide. Um, a couple of important things about motion, uh, motion detection with our cameras that you want to pay attention to. There's different sensitivity. You see a screenshot on the left. Um, you see the region ID and then to the right of that is sensitivity. Um, the sensitivity is where you would basically adjust um, how sense, I mean, like it says, how sensitive you want the motion detection to be. Um, anything closer to 100 is pretty much going to set off the motion detection when anything moves. If, if a leaf blows by, um, you know, if, if anything happens for any short period of time um, with a 100% sens sensitivity, it will trigger the motion detection. And then you can go all the way down to, you know, zero if you want. Um, well, I guess it would be probably 10. But on the lower end of that is going to give you the ability to really only have motion detection go off when something occurs for an extended period of time, for five to ten seconds, if you know people, if somebody stands in front of the camera for a while and there's a lot of motion, then the motion detection is going to go off with that lower sensitivity rating. Um, we can move on to the next slide where we'll cover the, uh, I believe, the alarm action, and that's where we are. So you set up motion detection on your grand stream camera. You 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 know what areas you're looking for. You know um, the you've set the 
uh, motion detection schedule. So now it's time to tell the camera what to do when it senses motion, and that's what alarm action is. Uh, this is a field in the user interface. You have all the options that you see here, and this pretty much corresponds to the alerts that I talked about uh, very early on in the webinar. Voice alarm to SIP phone, that's simply a call to a SIP phone, upload, upload to alarm center, that would be whatever NVR or video management software you're using. Upload alarm HTTP server, you can have um, you know, recordings uploaded to an HTTP server, to an FTP, ser FTP server, um, or you could email, um, have it email you a screenshot and that's where you would set that up. If you're looking to have the camera make a video call to you, that would actually be voice alarm to SIP phone. And as long as the camera that is calling is a video, support SIP video, the SIP video will go through in addition to the voice. So we can move on to the next slide. That's pretty much just telling you, you know, what you're going to want to do, um, how to tell the camera what to do with it. So now we're going to wrap up, and I'll, I'll, I realize we're moving a little bit, uh, taking a little bit too, uh, more time than I thought I would, move through our GVR3550 and integration with the PBX before we finish up here. So I uh, showed you this slide earlier, uh, you know, easy uh, GVR3550, very easy to install, network video recorder. Here you see the, install, the easy installation through that auto discovery page, uh, which I also showed you earlier. Uh, I can move on to the next slide, which I believe is going to show you some more specifications. Here we go. So this is what a lot of people are going to be looking for. Um, GVR3550 is can record up to 24 cameras at a 720p resolution. Um, so it maxes out at 24 cameras. You can see up to 16 cameras through the live view. Um, that's, you know, if you have the GVR hooked up to, um, you know, for example, to a monitor through the VGA or through the HDMI output. Um, important thing to mention here is that the, the NVR, you can obviously hook it up to a monitor. Um, you can also just tap into it and see all of this just by going into the camera's web user interface without having to connect it to, um, directly to a monitor. A couple of different options there. I mentioned the storage, 16 terabytes of storage from up to four hard drives. Again, the hard drives are not included, but why, the reason why we've done that is to allow you to scale this GVR3550 to whatever, um, you know, the, to basically to how intense you're going to be using it. Um, for how many cameras, for how much you're going to be recording. Only buy and only install the hard drives that you need to allow this to be a really cost-effective and scalable solution to, across a lot of different uses. Um, two USB ports, um, you know, you see the, the inputs for the remote control, the optional USB mouse and the keyboard, um, and it does support Grandstream and OnViv cameras. And we can move on to the next slide. So kind of, you know, all of what I talked about, you know, the support for the 24 cam up to 24 cameras, the scalability of it, uh, you know, the cost effectiveness of it, the ability to, you know, um, be tapped into through a user interface or directly by connecting it to a monitor, makes this ideal for, you know, retail stores, franchise stores, smaller offices, uh, home users. Um, you know, pretty much the, the one that we're focusing on here is retail and franchise stores. You know, we find that a lot of, you know, your corner convenience stores or, you know, a sub, uh, you know, a sub shop or a coffee shop, um, you know, they all need video surveillance more now than ever before. And a lot of these companies or a lot of these stores either don't have it or they're using those old school CCTV systems, which are just a lot more proprietary in nature impossible to up, update um, and require, you know, just more heavy installation. Um, where our GVR3550 offers these, these franchise and retail stores a great option for both recording and monitoring. It's a dedicated solution, doesn't tie up, um, you know, doesn't need wires run all over the place, doesn't tie up the bandwidth uh, for the rest of their network or for their POS systems. This is a separate standalone video management uh, video recording and monitoring solution. Um, that's great for retail stores, franchise stores, and all the other uh, industries that I mentioned earlier. And we can move on to the next slide. So here's, you know, this is actually probably the most, 
one of the most popular slides whenever we put this up. Just to show you, I talked earlier about uh, a lot of the third-party devices, whether they be speakers, microphones, intercom systems, third-party motion sensors, uh, sirens, alarms, that you can integrate with our cameras. Well, this is pretty much to just show you that you can also integrate these devices directly into the GVR3550 if that might be easier for you. Um, this is a great central point for an intercom system. You see the RCA uh, input and output for audio input and audio output, as well as the other um, you know, per uh, peripherals that this device has. Um, the eSATA port over there on the left for an external eSATA hard drive for backup or for exporting. USB for a mouse or keyboard or what have you. There's also a USB port on the front of the device. VGA output, HDMI output, uh, your LAN port, and there you go with the alarm inputs and the alarm outputs. And we can move on to the next slide. Uh, this is just to show you, you know, four, um, you know, the, the GVR3550 includes four different customizable recording schedules which you can set to your liking. Um, these schedules can be for one camera, for all your cameras, for groups of cameras, it's fully customizable. Um, number one, continuous. That's pretty simple, 24-7 recording. Second option is schedule-based recording, which you can pretty much tell it, um, through the web user interface of the GVR when you want it to record. Um, event triggered, which would be, for example, motion detection. Um, you know, it only records when an event is triggered, for example, motion detection. And then number four, you see the manual recording, which you can log in at any point in time to, the, to any camera's user interface and turn on the recording, excuse me, or you can turn on, um, or you can obviously manually turn it on through the GVR 3550's web user interface. And we can move on to the next slide. Various alarm settings, you know, we've talked pretty much through all of these. Um, you know, the different alarm settings we focus on, the motion detection, uh, camera occlusion, which is basically when a camera is no longer producing a video stream for any reason, um, and the GVR3550 can also, um, you know, sound alarms and begin recording when an alarm from device is integrated with the camera or the GVR3550, any of those third-party devices um, senses an alarm or sounds an alarm. And we can move on. <coughs> Um, this pretty much is just to show you, kind of to, to bring the whole thing home and show you kind of, you know, a great option in case you may have different, um, you know, up to three different areas, three different offices, three different locations that you want to um, have a GVR3550 set up on the premise for um, local recording and local monitoring, but you also want to record and monitor all of this from a central location. Easy way to do that, have, you know, set up a GVR3550 in each one of those locations, two, three locations, and then also install GSurf Pro centrally, have it tap into the IPAs of all of those cameras, and you can view multiple locations and up to 72 cameras from one central place using GSurf Pro, which again is a free video management software. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We could move on to the next slide. Uh, so now I'll, I'll, for the next like two, three minutes here, I'll power through this uh, integration with an IP PBX and kind of why we're such a big proponent of that. Um, you know, being one of the original SIP manufacturers, one of the only companies in the world that manufactures both IP PBXs, IP phones, and IP video surveillance cameras. You know, we we have seen firsthand how much you can get by registering these SIP cameras to an IP PBX by giving them that SIP extension. That's going to allow you to, you know, do a lot of what I've talked about in terms of being able to call the cameras directly, being able to have the cameras call you, being able to communicate with uh, door cameras, being able to pick up a SIP phone or a video phone and make a call and speak through the camera's intercom or speaker or microphone. All of this is what you're going to get, get by registering your SIP cameras to an IP PBX to really add features and allow the cameras to pro more proactively alert you when security alarms or events occur. We can move on to the next slide. So here's our, you know, I'll touch on this real fast. We talked about this in our last webinar. Two real fast, um, or these are our, our current line of IP PBXs, our UCM series. UCM 6100 series, which comes in four models. You see those at the top. Um, those are basically small business geared IP PBXs. 
meant for up to 500 users, and then our UCM6510 at the bottom uh, is for up to 2,000 users. These are asterisk-based PBXs. Uh, we've basically taken the very popular asterisk platform, wrapped our own user interface around it, and the best thing about all of these is they include full unified communication features, voice, video, data, and mobility features and support with no licensing fees. The only thing you're ever going to pay for these is the one-time upfront purchase price. And we can move on. I do apologize for taking a little bit longer than usual. As you can see, I'm you know, pretty passionate about talking about this stuff. We could go on for days about you know, some of the other uses of it. Um, only got a couple of slides here, so I promise we're, we're wrapping up here soon. Um, so two advantages that we like to talk about um, for why you should add your SIP cameras to an IP PBX. And the number one thing that you see here, and I pretty much touched on this, is to create that one integrated network solution. Um, all, for example, you see that image there? All of those devices are all registered back to one UCM 6100 series IP PBX. It allows for full voice communications, full video communications, full uh, you know, fax, uh, bringing in analog lines, video conferencing, door cameras, deck phones, um, you know, NVRs, what have you all managed and all registered in one central location from that UCM 6100 series. Um, and this simply put allows all of those devices to communicate together and work proactively to protect and allow you to communicate. Um, you can move on to the next slide. And the second advantage of, of you know, why you would want to add your SIP cameras to an IP PBX is so you can communicate with them on any network. Give them that SIP extension, which allows you to, you know, the camera basically now has a phone number. You can now call that camera from any network. That camera can call out to any network. Um, you know, it can send you the email screenshots. It can send the video calls. It can send the voice calls when alarms occur. Um, that's what you're going to get by adding your SIP cameras to an IP PBX. And we can move on. I believe we only have a couple of slides left here. Yeah, and actually, so now I believe I will turn it back over to Scott, who will wrap up and kind of tell you about some, some places where you can meet and meet Grandstream and find out more about us. Perfect, Phil. Thank you very much. Great presentation. All right, guys, just quickly, just to let you know that Alloy and Grandstream will have a booth at the upcoming Security and Exhibition Conference in July. Um, it's at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre on the 15th and 17th of July, or 15th through to the 17th of July. So make sure you do come down and, and take a look at the stand and see these products um, all up and running and, and looking good. Okay, also guys, what we've got is in a couple of weeks, we've actually got two Grand Stream representatives coming over to Australia to the Alloy office for about a week. Um, now, on the Wednesday, the May the 6th, there's an opportunity for you guys to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the Grandstream personnel. So we've got Rachel Saunders, who's the Executive Manager of APAC Sales, and we've also got Hugh, who's the Senior Technical Consultant of Asia Pack as well. So these guys will be in our Melbourne office on Wednesday, May the 6th. So if you do want to organise a meeting with these guys or if you can't get to the LA office, you want to do a video conference or, or possibly even we can get um, these guys to come out to your office, please do contact your Alloy account manager or send an email through to sales at Alloy or to myself, scott.young at alloy.com.au um, and we'll try and organise a time for you guys to, to meet one-on-one -on -one with the Grandstream staff. As well as the time slot on Wednesday, we also have a small training session happening on actually Wednesday, May 6th, actually Friday, May the 8th, um, where we will be running some training in the Alloy office. So if you do want to attend the training that we're running, please do uh, once again contact your Alloy account manager or email sales at alloy.com.au or myself scott.young at alloy.com.au. All right, moving on to Q&A. Now, there was a couple of questions that were answered over the, the chat session during or throughout the presentation that I'll get to first. First of all, there was an, a question about basically manually recording or, or as um, from Gino, which was, can you set 
an away mode. So basically turn on the recording and monitoring of the cameras. So yeah, throughout the presentation we did see that there was an option to be actually go into the either the GVR 3550 itself or each individual camera and manually record or start recording on those cameras. All right, another question here from Mark McKenzie. In hospitality, how can you run an IP video phone over a two-wire circuit? Okay, so not easily. It can be done by using um, little ATA devices, I suppose. So what you can do is register the video phone to an ATA, local ATA. It can then talk um, FXS uh, back to FXO on a, on a second ATA, which then converts it back to SIP and can talk back to your, your Ethernet network. So there is ways to do it, it just gets a little bit messy and there's a few more devices that you need to, to add to the puzzle. Alright guys, any other questions that you have for, for while we've got Phil here? If you do have any questions, please raise your hand in the, in the little GoToWebinar panel. If you don't want to... Um, ask a question verbally, do feel free to top it in to the question panel and I'll read it out and either myself or Phil will try and answer the question as best as we can for you. Alright guys, doesn't look like there's any questions. Phil, you've done too good a job. <laughs> Alright guys, if there's no questions, um, we'll wrap it up. Once again, Phil, thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate um, the efforts that you're putting in. It's, it's, I know it's getting late over there, so we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me again. You know, look forward to more of these. And you know, um, <laughs> apologize for taking a little bit extra time or more time than I thought I was going to. That's fine, Phil. Thank you very much, guys. Once again, I, ooh, no, okay, people just saying thank you very much, Phil. Um, okay, so yeah, thanks guys, and we'll wrap it up now, and we'll see you at the next webinar that we do. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks.